All right, October. Yes. October, where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mm. Tell me about your family growing up. Um, I was born and raised with my parents, so I, just me and my parents. Um, they weren't really like huge family people, so um, I have a half sister, but I didn't grow up with her. She was raised. She's my dad's daughter, but I didn't grow up with her. She was raised in Kentucky. So you were kind of an only child. Yeah, raised as an only child. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your childhood? Um, my childhood was really, really good. My so more context on my parents. So my mom, she was a model, um, body piercer, an artist, and my dad, he was into music. He played guitar. My dad was a tattoo artist. Um, <laughs> my dad was also just an artist in general. So growing up was really, really fun because my dad played guitar. He was constantly um, like, like, I don't know if touring is the right word, but playing all the time. So I was constantly just going to band practice with my dad and watching him play and going to tattoo conventions. My parents opened their own tattoo shop when I was a year old. So they worked really, really hard on that. They had a great tattoo shop. Um, I watched my mom model when I was growing up. So, I mean, it was like that yeah, kind of like rock children. and roll parents, you know, we were always traveling. We always went to Mexico and California, um, even though we lived in Tennessee. So that's like pretty far. Um, so yeah, it was great. Like I would even like miss school so we could like go on vacations and things like that. So. I guess because of that, it kind of put a little bit of distance between me and like the rest of my family. Um, my parents were just, they were younger when they had me. So they were just so busy doing stuff, working and partying and doing all the stuff that the rest of my family didn't really, you know, stay involved too much. Like, of course, they still loved us and everything, but they, they knew my parents were so busy that they weren't like, constantly in the loop so they kind of just assumed that I was great and I was doing my thing and I would stay with my grandparents on the weekends um like on both sides of my family but I was with my parents a majority of the time and also I had a babysitter because my parents were so busy with the tattoo shop so on the weekdays I would stay with the babysitter and then on the weekends I would usually stay with my grandparents as long as like and like if my parents were out of town if they were in town a lot of the times my parents brought me along. So like the, the conventions, the modeling, all of that. Sounds like a fun childhood. It was really, really fun. Yeah, my childhood was great. And your parents got into drugs or were into drugs early or later in their lives? So I noticed my mom, like my parents partied a lot and I didn't really think anything of it. Uh, they would throw parties at the house a lot. And if they threw like really big parties and I would stay with my grandparents on the weekends. Um, but a lot of times they would just throw parties while I was there. And I would, my mom would just be wasted. Like both my parents would be wasted. Um, but then I noticed that like, like I would have friends over on the weekdays and then my mom would get super drunk. And then like my dad would like get mad about it or my dad would also be super drunk. So I noticed that, but it never really like worried me at all. I was kind of like, oh, like my parents are just party people. It is what it is. Um, and then eventually my dad like stopped drinking. And that's when I kind of got worried because my dad stopped drinking to try and get my mom to stop drinking. And so I realized like, okay, yeah, my mom definitely does have a problem because my dad is like, maybe if I stop drinking, she'll stop too. And it didn't stop. So that's when I kind of saw like the emotional side of my dad. Um, my, my mom was very like the control freak. I'm in charge. I've got this. And my dad was more of the like, hold my hand through it. I'm not sure if I'm okay kind of guy. So when my mom was just over here, like struggling and I didn't know, my dad was like, okay, I'm going to struggle too if you're not okay. So then my dad, you know, he tried to stop drinking and my mom kept on. And that's when I saw my dad like really struggle with his mental health. Um, 
I saw my dad cry a lot and I, I talked to other people and they're like, I've never heard my dad cry. And I'm like, really? Um, my dad was super emotional and he would even try and get me to like say things for him in case like it would mean more to my mom. So like, he'd be like, you need to tell her that she needs to stop drinking or, or something along that line, you know, and would use me. And it honestly kind of made me look at my mom in a bad way. I was just like, oh my gosh, like my mom is just this alcoholic and she doesn't care about anything. But I didn't see what she was putting up with, especially because of my dad being like that. Like my dad was always had like anxiety and panic attacks and I didn't like understand what it was. He would literally like pull over on the side of the road and just like sit there and be like, no, I can't drive. Like I'm having a full on panic attack. And I would just sit there and just wait until he was done. I had no idea that he was like struggling with anything. So, um, my mom just drinking, drinking, drinking. And my dad, like my dad would drink every now and then, but he pretty much like got the partying and stuff like to a wraps, um, right as I was like finishing elementary school. So I would say like my elementary school, like time period was like great. And it was super, super fun. And then when I went into middle school is when I started to really see issues. So uh, I started to see domestic violence in the home. And I had never seen my parents do anything like that. The, I would hear them plead with each other, like not to hurt one another. Um, they would just scream at each other for hours. Again, my dad would pull me in and be like, look at your mom, you need to tell her blah, blah, blah. And I would just be like, what, you know? And it's sad because I don't think my dad realized like how harmful that was. I think he just felt super alone and was like, why is no one else like getting this through your head to my mom? And I was just there. So in middle school, like the vacation stopped. And that's when I knew like things were going bad it was because my mom couldn't even like keep up with all the stuff we had been doing my whole life. So no more trips to Mexico. Um, she ended up buying a home here in California. Um, I can't remember exactly when. I think it was a little bit into me being in middle school. And so we would stay in that home out here during the summer and we would stay out here for the whole summer. And it was always horrible because my mom would just be wasted the whole time. And me and my dad were just stuck here dealing with it. And I think like, during the three years I was in middle school, I started to see my mom's appearance change a lot. Like her stomach started protruding a lot. And my mom was like a model, really skinny, uh, really tall and always so healthy. Like my mom was a health freak. So when I saw her like having a belly, I was really confused because like, it wasn't like a fat belly, if that makes any sense. Like it was literally like a forward like protrusion. Um, like inflammation, exactly, inflammation. And my dad would just be like, why do you look like that? Like you're fat, you're, why do you look like this? And again, like he wasn't even trying to hurt her, but he was like, why the hell do you look like this all of a sudden? And uh, her jaw, like all the skin started to droop a little bit. And she just told me and my dad that it was a thyroid problem. And she genuinely, she genuinely believed that it was a thyroid problem and she was taking medicine for it. And I mean, that could have contributed to it, but that was not the reason that she was looking like that. So things, yeah, like I said, things were really, really bad when I was like going through middle school, all the fun stuff was stopping. My parents were fighting all the time. I started to see the domestic violence and things like that. And at this point, my family like really didn't talk to me. Like um, some of my grandparents on my, like my mom's parents, uh, her dad had passed and her mom was getting older. So I would like occasionally stay with my grandparents on my dad's side, but it was like, it was super rare. I almost never, saw my grandma on my dad's side that much. Um, so, um, when I started high school, it was like the summer before I started my freshman year, we were out here in California and my dad was out here guest spotting in a tattoo shop. 
And my dad had kind of always dealt with like back pain from tattooing since you're just like hunched over like that. And so he asked someone if they had like a painkiller. And so someone did and they, I, I still to this day don't know like what it was, but they gave him a prescribed painkiller and they gave him a couple. So he had taken some that day and I think he had like taken some for the next day and they like really, really helped him. And he wasn't abusing them or anything like that. So he, he found them out here. He was introduced to the opioids out in California. So then maybe like August of my freshman year, we went back to Tennessee and um, that's when like things just started getting so weird. The first time I actually noticed it was super duper weird. My parents used to have to drive me to my bus stop. So my dad drove me to my bus stop and I showed him this song, um, How Could You Leave Us by NF. And the song is literally about how this guy lost his mom to pill addiction. And I just like, it was so raw and emotional. And I'm like, man, like imagine going through that. And I don't know, like I swear I like put it out into the universe because that was like one of the first times I'd ever seen my dad high. And I told him about it. And of course he's like, I've never heard that, blah, 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 kind of brushing it off. And then that week, like, his mannerism just got so exaggerated. So my dad was always like a funny guy, like a lighthearted guy, a comedian type, but it was just like really like inappropriate jokes and just things that weren't funny or he, like I said, just everything was super exaggerated. And I'm like, why, why is this happening? I could tell something was off. Um, so then things started getting like really, really bad. Uh, again, I don't know what my dad was taking exactly, but it eventually turned into fentanyl. And I don't know like how soon it turned into fentanyl, but I would say pretty soon because my dad started acting absolutely insane. And for anyone who's never seen someone on fentanyl, like I can't even describe it. It's just like constant screaming. Yeah, like screaming, like screaming like there's someone out to murder them, yelling, um, super strength. Like, I feel like no one mentions these things. A weird obsession with water, um, slapping himself. My dad would rip his hair out. My dad had dreadlocks. So yelling, slapping, kicking. Uh, he, obsession with water, like I said, he would like start exercising profusely. And like it, it, like I know this sounds so lighthearted, but it was like horrible. Like my dad would like do a bunch of push-ups and then try and do like pull-ups and like yank the whole door frame off the wall. So one of the first like really big instances I saw with my dad, um, I used to ride horses. I did it competitively for like 11 years and I was always at the barn. So one day I was at the barn and my mom picked me up and me and my mom were not prepared for what we walked into. Um, so we open the door and I go to my room and my whole room is flooded and there's like water rushing out of the ceiling. And my dad's like somewhere in a room screaming, yelling, crying, who knows, we could just hear him. Uh, my dad had somehow punched, kicked, fell into, I don't know, busted a water pipe that was upstairs so it went through the ceiling and completely flooded my room and I couldn't sleep in there for the night like it wasn't like destroyed but it like there was standing water all over the floor my bed was soaked everything was soaked and I was like what the hell so my mom ended up kicking my dad out that night and sometimes she would like um this was in this was in April of my freshman year. So between like August to April, we hadn't really seen my dad do anything. Like no serious event had occurred until now. We had just seen his weird behavior. So my mom kicked him out that night and we almost never kicked my dad out, but that was just ridiculous. So my mom kicked him out for the night and I ended up sleeping in our guest bedroom. So then I wake up for school and I hear my dad yelling with my mom. So obviously my dad had come back sometime in the middle of the night. 
And all of a sudden, I hear my dad say, hit me again. And I just hear this giant crash. Both of them are screaming. And I just run out of the room and I'm like, can, can you guys stop? Like, this is just insane. And then they just keep on and keep on. They're fighting and fighting. And so they're in the living room and it's like a straight shot to the kitchen, hallway kitchen. And my dad's like, screw it, I'm out of here. So he goes to leave and he takes a gun that's like near the door because we have weapons in the house. And he tries to leave. And my mom just takes off after him. And I'm like watching it because I was like in the living room with them fighting. So my dad walks off, tries to leave. My mom jumps in front of the door, slams it, and they're sitting there fighting with a gun in between their hands. So I'm like sitting there like, here's the day I have to watch my parents shoot each other. And I just fall to the ground and I just am screaming like, stop. And I finally screamed loud enough to where they heard me and they looked over and they just dropped the gun and they were pretty much like, what the hell are we doing right now? And I was like, someone calls the cops right now. Like, I cannot deal with this. So I ended up calling my sister. And what's crazy is my sister had grown up in Kentucky and she was in Tennessee going to college. And I'd never talked to my sister really. Like we were only as close as we could be. So I called her and I didn't even tell her what happened. I'm like, you've got to pick me up and take me to school right now. And so she kind of knew that things were bad with my parents, but she had no idea like what the reality of it was. So she shows up, my dad calls the cops, thankfully. So the cops roll up and then my sister like came like right behind them. So it all happened pretty fast and I was out of there. And um, I got in the car and there was like blood all over my arms from like, I tried to break them up fighting before they grabbed the gun and stuff like that. And I just like, just seeing like my parents' blood on my arm as I'm like being driven to, to high school, I was just like, what? Like, what is going on? And my sister, like, for sure thought someone had died, like, thought one of them had murdered each other, but luckily they didn't. I got to school. I really wasn't able to explain to her much what happened. I got to school, and my friends started laughing at me because my eyes were all red. They thought that I had just been smoking a bunch of weed, and I, like, looked at them, and I'm like, you have no idea what I just saw and what I just had to intervene with. And they they immediately were just like, oh, shit. And... Oh, it was just sad that my own friends were like laughing at me after I had gone through something so intense because I had no idea. So my sister was nice enough to let me stay with her that night, um, even though I had never stayed to my sister before. Like, we're not close. I stayed with my sister, and then um, she took me to school the next day, and I was just, like, not wanting to go home at all. So I decided that I was going to go at least like hang out after school with my boyfriend at the time. So me and him, we walk out to the student parking lot and we weren't old enough to drive, but his brother was. So we're out in the student parking lot and my mom calls me and I immediately knew something was wrong. She told me that my dad overdosed behind the wheel, crashed the truck into a telephone pole and it's totaled and he's okay and he's in a hospital. The reason this truck is a big deal is because my, by this time, my mom's dad had passed. He gifted this truck to my mom to give to me when I was old enough to drive it. I was 15 at the time. He totaled my dead grandpa's truck that was a gift to me a year before I was able to drive it. So, of course, I was super concerned about my dad, of course. But, like, hearing my mom on the phone and just how, like, destroyed she was hurt so bad. And I thought for sure, like, this was going to be the wake-up call for my dad. And it was literally just the first incident, the first big thing that happened. Um, my mom really started to spiral after this, and she was drinking nonstop. She, w she would constantly, like, hide bottles around the house. My mom drank wine. And that's another big thing. People think alcoholics can't die from beer or wine. That's such a lie. You can die off of anything that has alcohol in it if you abuse it. 
And um, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's ridiculous that people think that. You can die from drinking wine. It's true. So my mom would hide wine bottles all over the house and then just be like, I don't know what you're talking about, blah, blah, blah. And I would literally just whip out a whole bag full and be like, you can stop lying because I already found everything. Um, and my mom just, it was weird because although, like I said, like her stomach was getting bigger and her, her like skin was getting more saggy, she was losing so much body fat. And it was just, it was getting so bad. Um, after my dad wrecked the truck, my mom bought him a nice, really nice BMW. And um, my dad ended up getting sober for around like a year or something like that. It was like, it was like seven to eight months maybe. So maybe like my, my 10th grade year was pretty like mellow. Like my dad actually like kinda got a wake up call from the truck situation. I think he was in and out of rehab like a couple different times. Um, but he, yeah, only stayed sober for a little bit of time. So forward to my junior year of high school, that's when things started to get like really bad again. Um, my dad was constantly wrecking the car. Like he, he would just like nod out and just like hit something. Um, sorry, I need to like gain my thoughts for a second. Um, I'll go back to the tattoo shop. So if, if my dad was acting like super duper crazy and we needed him out of the house, we would like sometimes drop him off at a hotel or we would ask him to go to the tattoo shop. And sometimes he would just drive his BMW there or we would drop him off. We, we tried really hard not to let him drive just because obviously he didn't need to be driving under the influence. So um, we would drop him off at hotels and he would just walk around the city at night getting food and all kinds of shit. So he would like walk back home and show up with like four bags full of food and just like nothing ever bothered him. We, we dropped him off or he, maybe he drove there to the tattoo shop one time and he was just destroyed the tattoo shop. Uh, he just knocked stuff down. He, I don't exactly know what happened, but he apparently knocked a skateboard off the wall, fell on his face and broke his nose. So he just showed up at our house, two black eyes and his nose gushing blood. I mean, come on, this is my dad. Um, he would walk in front of the street naked. He would have no clothes on in front of me and scream at me that he is fully clothed. Um, like it was horrible. Like this is my dad, you know, like acting like a full grown toddler just because he was completely out of his mind. And it was getting so hard for my mom. Like the tattoo shop would be like her safe place. And, you know, my parents had that tattoo shop for 18 years. It was only business they ever built and they completely built it from the ground up so my mom would just like hide at the tattoo shop pretty much and my dad would just show up all messed up and I would either have to pick him up um, or my mom would take him home or he would drive home um, that was one of the hardest things to deal with towards the end of it was because my dad was just running off clients and uh my friends, my friends from high school would go there and be like, your mom gave me a piercing and she smelled like alcohol the whole time. And so I left. And so just like hearing stuff like that uh, was just so hard. People would leave horrible reviews like my friends about my parents just because, you know, uh, well, not just because, but, you know, because of their addiction. It was sad because I'm like, this is not them. This is just something that's coming out of their issues. Um. So my mom, like there was starting to get bad reviews about my mom and my dad was just constantly running off clients. He couldn't work. And so um, my dad, uh, I'm jumping back and forth so much, but yeah, my dad would just randomly like drive the car around and he wrecked the car um, on like two occasions before he ended up totaling it. And and my mom was just pissed because she bought him this car and um, he was just wrecking it left and right and just being like, I don't know how that got there, blah, blah, blah. And 
at this time, like, none of my family was helping. Like, I, I talked to our family members and sometimes I would send them over to the house to like check on my dad and they would just sit there and like steal stuff from my dad. And I know this because like I would be there sometimes. So I would like ask like my dad's friends be like, hey, I'm, I'm really worried about my dad. Um, can you just come over and, and just sit with him? And they would just sit there and like coax my dad into giving like my dad giving them things because my dad like played guitar and stuff like that so my dad built pedals so my dad had like tons of nice pedals and tons of nice things and he would just be like yeah man here 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 because he was high and it just made me sad because I would call people over because I'm thinking my dad is gonna either hurt someone or hurt himself and they're coming over to steal stuff from him so that was one of the really big issues was my dad's like emotional state was really like coming to a head and there were so many nights my mom just she couldn't cover it up anymore and she was sick of it you know we couldn't sleep because my dad like I don't know how to describe the screaming my dad would scream for days straight he would go outside and scream and people would call the cops he would run in my room and scream at my face he screamed so much. There was no sleep. If we tried to sleep, like, I also, I was downstairs, and my parents never really, like, slept in the same bed towards the end of it. So my mom would just sit upstairs with the door closed, and I'm sharing a wall with my dad, who's banging on the wall, screaming, saying he's going to end his life. So there was so many nights where I literally, no sleep, have school in the morning, um, where I would just hold my dad in my arms on the ground while he cried. And he's like, I'm worthless. I'm the F up. I'm going to hurt myself, blah, blah, blah. And I would just have to sit there and, and just like baby him out of it in a way. And it got to the point where my dad would use like him going to harm himself as kind of like a scare tactic. So if me and my mom were like just fed up with him, he would be like, no one loves me and I'm going to go like, hurt myself and you guys are going to be responsible and he would literally do that or say that and I, it was so hard because it got to a point where I'm like am I a bad person for ignoring him or like because I had no idea if he was being serious or not and I know like he was obviously very emotionally distraught but I mean he would do that if he didn't get his way if we didn't drive him to Dunkin Donuts so he, my dad was just so emotional and my mom was just fed up with it. She had enough. Um, my dad couldn't work. So my mom was the only one working and she's drinking herself to death. So my mom got to the point where she was like throwing up every single day, all the time. Like my mom would wake up and just start throwing up. And I just like, of course I noticed it, but I was like, almost like mad at her in a sense because I was just like dad is doing so bad and now you're getting so much worse like it was so hard to deal with because I actually my junior year um well after my sophomore year I ended up leaving public high school to go to college so I actually graduated at 17 with a degree in science um a two-year degree in science and my high school diploma so I like my last two years of high school were brutal. I did summer school over my junior year. I was like grinding my ass off because I was like, this is the one thing I'm not gonna let my parents take away. I'm gonna get my education and I'm gonna get out of here. And so the fact that I went through college at 16 years old, like, and and did so well, you know, I, I can't even believe I did that. Cause I, I went like several days without sleep. Me and my mom would sometimes go to a hotel, um, but that was worth nothing because we would just be checking the security cameras all night long, calling my dad, making sure he was there and not driving, um, making sure no one was like pulling up at the house, anything like that. So if I tried to leave and get some sleep, it was pretty much useless because I was just so worried about my dad. I remember one time I was in the shower and I didn't hear my dad screaming for like a couple seconds. And I immediately freaked out because I thought he had harmed himself. So I just flew out of the shower 
And I was like, Dad, like I started screaming. And he was just standing in the hallway, like looking all confused, like, why the hell are you running out here? And I just like totally broke down because I was like, I can't even take a shower without being worried that my dad's going to hurt himself if I don't have my eyes on him or my ears on him. And that's when I knew, like, I can't do this. I, I cannot sit here and be responsible for them. And um, I love them through everything. And I think that's so important. I loved them the whole time and I supported them the whole time, even though my friends were texting me saying, hey, your dad just bought drugs in a Walmart parking lot. You know, my my parents or my friends were literally texting me being like, hey, I just saw your mom at the liquor store. Hey, I just saw your dad running across the road. Like, it was so hard for me to deal with because I was working so hard on trying to get my life right. And just knowing that my parents were just destroying themselves was horrible. So, um, my last year of high school, um, I can't remember like the exact timelines or anything like that, but my dad, um, he ended up totaling the BMW and, but before that, before that he got pulled over outside of the tattoo shop. My dad had gotten pulled over like a couple different times, I think. And my dad got pulled over one time with his dog. So I had a dog, my mom had a dog, and my dad had a dog. And we tried everything we could to not let my dad take the dog, but he would put up a huge fight. It was basically impossible. So my dad got pulled over with the dog one time, and luckily one of the workers at the shop like saw when they were going home, they saw my dad being pulled over and they ended up getting the dog. And, uh, like, it was just crazy. I think my dad ended up getting arrested and got a DUI and got in trouble for possession. And, um, and then, like, even one time we called that same worker to come get the dog from my dad. My dad took off running after her car to try and get the dog back. So, like, it was just, like, ridiculous. We couldn't even keep the dog safe. And th we'd only had this dog for like two years. Like we'd had the other dogs for a while, but my dad's dog was like pretty newly adopted. So then my dad ends up running off the side of the road one day and the dog's in the car. And my dad ends up getting like two DUIs and the car is totaled and he goes to jail and the dog stays the night in jail with my dad. And like, I know that sounds like comical, but that's, ridiculous I cannot believe like that the police let him do that because they just like my dad was so baby like my dad was telling me yeah they they were talking to me and they were giving me food and they were hanging out with me and the dog like nothing was putting my dad in his place every time he got punished it was like a little vacation we dropped him off at a hotel he would just run around and go get food and drugs he goes to jail and he's hanging out with the cops with his dog like, I literally could not believe it. I'm over here crying because I find out my dad's been arrested. And my, like, I had a great childhood. My parents had never done anything like this. So to hear my dad is going to jail is, like, insane. So my dad, like, this was the second time he went to jail. He totaled the car. And my mom was just done. Like, my mom was completely done with him. And by this point, my mom was getting, like, really, really sick, um... And yeah, I can't, I'm struggling to like think of the exact dates and everything like that. So <clears throat> anyways, 2021 was the year I was graduating. So I don't remember if my dad like totaled the car before or after I graduated. I feel like it was before. So anyways, my dad is still doing like really, really bad um and my mom's doing really bad. And then I have my graduation coming up. And I never planned for my graduation. It was crazy. I, I didn't think I was gonna survive living with my parents. And I was surprised that my parents even made it to my graduation. Like I was really shocked. Um, so I graduated and everything. Like I said, got a two year degree at 17 along with my diploma and a couple days later, my dad didn't even remember that I graduated. He like 
I don't remember if we were actually talking or if we were texting and he was just saying something like, oh yeah, like your graduation's coming up. And I was like, you went to my graduation, it already passed. And that just like, oh man, it just like sucked. I was like, this drug has just ruined you. And uh, at the time when my dad, um, when my dad totaled the car, he was actually taking fentanyl cut with benzos, which is like the worst of the worst right now. I guess it's called Trank or whatever. Um, so my mom had bought the summer home, like I mentioned, when way back when, and it had just been sitting out here in California. And I desperately wanted to get the hell out of the house. So I was like, mom, I'm going to go to college in California and I'm going to live out there. So I actually was going to UC San Diego, great school. I was shocked I got in. Um, and honestly, I did not want to go. I wanted to get the hell out of my parents' house. I had already gotten my degree. I felt happy. And by the time I got out here, I was burnt out. Like I had no energy having to just be in survival mode my whole life. And, um, so I, I moved out here and my parents were really, really helpful. I could not have done any of this without my parents. My parents my parents were great. They were great parents. They just really had deep personal issues and um, it just caught up to them. So I was out here and I remember like my best friend actually helped me move out too. So my mom, my dad and my best friend were all out here helping me and my dad and my best friend flew back home to Tennessee together. And so it was just me and my mom. And I remember like my mom was so drunk one night, she was sitting on the couch and I like could not help it, but I like was so angry and mad that I like just got right up on her and was like, had my hand like on the back of the couch over her. And I'm like, I have had enough of this. Like it makes me want to like harm you because I'm so angry that like you cannot stop drinking. And it was scary because like my anger, like really, it was bad. I, at, at one point in Tennessee, I remember I pushed my dad and I like really got my shit together after that because I was like, this is so scary that I have no control over my anger to the point where I can harm someone. And I never let that happen again. I never, ever, ever meant to hurt my dad. And I, I didn't hurt him. He literally just t fell over. But I knew then that this was bigger than me, that their problems were taking over me. So then, like, my mom goes back to Tennessee, and I'm out here on my own. And my mom is calling me in the middle of the night. You need to please help me. Can I please move in? Your dad won't stop, blah, blah, blah. The shop is a mess. We've lost all the customers. And then I have my dad blowing me up, being like, your mom is an effing liar. Look at all this stuff, like sending me photos of bottles and stuff like that. So it was really hard because I had my dad going, your mom's destroying me. And my mom going, your dad's destroying me. And I'm like, you guys need to get a divorce. And that was one of the biggest things that I couldn't shake them. My dad was like, you just want to break up the family. And I'm like, I just want to see you better because y'all both have issues and you're just pointing the finger at each other. And, you know, like I said, my dad had been in and out of rehab and my mom was like going to like a GI specialist. I'm like, Th this is not going to help, you know what I mean? Just totally taking the wrong approach to things. And I was like, you guys need to be separated. If they would have separated, I don't know if they would still be here, but I think things would have been a little bit different. Um, so I couldn't even keep my peace out here because my parents were just constantly just being like, help me, help me. And I'm out here just trying to get my life together. I ended up dropping out two days into school because I was so, I was just burnt out. I had no energy, no drive. And honestly, I had a really bad feeling about my parents, um, especially because my mom was like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna pay for your school, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, N no, you're not. Like you made your own money through a tattoo shop that you guys built. And I just, I knew the reality of it. Like you're not gonna be able to pay for this UC school. 
and I wasn't getting any scholarships or anything like that. So I just, I dropped out and I didn't feel guilty about it at all because I just really needed to live my life for a little bit and not my parents' life. And I thought I was going to be able to do that. So then Thanksgiving of 2021, oh, not Thanksgiving, um, the beginning of December 2021, I went to see my parents in Tennessee because they didn't come out to see me for Thanksgiving and I didn't go to see them. So I decided I would go like in between Christmas and Thanksgiving to Tennessee to kind of make it up with my family. And everything seemed like normal for what it was. Um... And then I went back and then about a week later, my parents didn't come with me, but they ended up flying separately like a week later. And my mom was a completely different person. Like she could barely walk. She wouldn't like look at me in the face. She could barely talk. Um, she started bleeding out of her rectum. Like there was just blood coming out of her. She was vomiting blood. And my mom had just turned 40. My mom's 40th birthday was December 7th. So, like, I couldn't believe this because, like, I've seen, I've seen two people die in front of me. And I've seen at least seven dead people. And to see, like, my mom like this, like, I immediately knew that this was irreversible. And uh, it was horrible because she had spent so much time planning out this awesome Christmas for me. And she had asked so many people about like what to get me and things like that. And she gave me the best Christmas I had ever had that last Christmas. And it was just, it meant so much to me because I knew she wanted to make me happy because she knew how much I was doing horrible living with them. And, or, you know, before I moved. And she, I guess that was kind of like her way of making it up to me. And also it made her happy. So she ended up getting me like these awesome pair of roller skates and just, she just planned it so much. And then I wanted to buy her a pair of jeans because she would wear her jeans until you could literally see her underwear. And I'm like, girl, you need to get a new pair of jeans. So I took her to the Levi's outlet um, near our house or near where where we are out here and she could barely get out of the car like she was like walking like this and she apologized to me and she's like I'm really sorry I'm walking so slow and I was just like why the hell is this happening like what is this like I wasn't mad at her but I was like this is so like far like this is so irreversible and so we go into the store. She goes like this and goes, I don't think I'm going to find anything. And so we get in the car and I just cry. And I'm like, Mom, you have got to go get help. Like, I don't know if help is going to help you, but you've got to go do something. Go to a hospital, anything. And my dad was pretty much at the same point as me, just like throwing his hands up in the air, being like, I don't know what to do because my mom was super hard headed you know, blamed everything on her thyroid, blamed everything on genetic stomach problems when we all knew what the hell was going on. And what's crazy was my mom didn't even drink when she was out there, um, when she was here in California visiting me. And I was like, why the hell are you so wasted? Blah, blah, blah. And my dad was like, she hasn't even drank. It was just the lack of oxygen to her brain and her organs shutting down. I mean, she was like, just so confused. I, like me and my dad would be talking and she would just look at us like this and stare. And we were like, what? Like, and I just remember like me and my dad just pleading and pleading with her to go to a hospital. She goes to a clinic to get a COVID test. And I'm, of course it's negative because she doesn't have freaking COVID. And I'm just like, I'm done. Like, I'm like, please go home right now and go like to a hospital because she didn't have health insurance out here. So that's why she was like, I can't see a doctor, blah, blah, blah. As if we cared, we would have paid for it. But anyways, she wanted to wait until she got home. And then she didn't see a doctor for like three or four days until she got back home. So it's the new year, it's 2022, January. And 
she finally goes to a hospital but this is when like covid had resurged so they were like not letting anyone in to go see her and it was like really bad so my mom ended up getting cleared for a liver transplant but she would have had to be she would have had to go to memphis which is like two hours away she would have to be airlifted well by the time they had a freaking bed open for her she had too much stuff on her to transport she had cirrhosis of the liver yeah so um they called me like the doctor like called me on a three-way call oh let me mention this like I said, COVID's going on. My dad is the only one that can see her. So can you imagine me trying to figure out what the hell's going on with my mom as my dad's high on fentanyl going to see her? And it also breaks my heart that that's what my mom had to deal with. Like that's the last thing my mom can remember is my dad being high in the room with her. It just like makes me sick and not at my dad, but just the fact that she could not get away from him and my mom loved my dad, but she did not love the fentanyl addiction that my dad was severely robbed of. She couldn't get away from it. And so I get a three-way call one day being like, hey, can we shove a breathing tube down your mom's throat? And I'm just like, oh my God. Like, they, like I think it's called like dialysis or something. So they did dialysis, they did the breathing tube, and then one of my mom's like workers at the shop was like, I haven't been able to see your mom, but I think you need to get down here right now. And it's really sad because while I was in communication with my mom, all she was texting me was, I'm so worried about dad. He just seems so angry. I'm so worried about him. As she's dying in the hospital, she's worried about my dad. And I'm like, it's, it's even more sad because the last thing she texted me was, I love you. And that was the last thing I ever heard from her. Um, so I book a flight immediately. Um, and what's, what's crazy is like, I remember I was at work one day and I like told one of my coworkers, I was like, I think my mom's dying. And I felt like wrong for saying that because I'm like, what if she's not? Like, what if everything is okay? But I like something was telling me like this is it. So I booked a flight immediately home and I had to go from San Diego to Atlanta, from Atlanta to Chattanooga. I get stuck in Atlanta and my flight is delayed till the next fucking morning. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like my mom is literally dying. So I have to Uber two hours. And my phone is about to die. So I'm outside waiting for this Uber. I've got 2% on my phone and I'm thinking if this Uber doesn't take me, I have to go all the way back into the airport, wait for my phone to charge, come back out here and get another Uber that'll hopefully take me. So I get in this Uber and I'm like, dude, it's gonna be far. And he's like, nope, get out. And I'm like, please, like I've got 1% on my phone. I can't even get another Uber without going all the way back into the airport. I'll pay you with cash. Like please just drive and he's like absolutely not and i'm like my mom is dying like please drive i my and i called my dad when i'm in the airport and he's so high that he didn't even answer the phone so i'm stuck in the atlanta airport two hours away from my dying mom and i can't get a hold of my family i call some of my family members and word for word i don't know what to tell you are you kidding me so i'm like I'm like so distraught because no one's trying to help me. This Uber's trying to kick me out. And finally, the Uber is like, I'll do it, but you, we have to cancel the ride, like on the app. And I was like, no. So I started to get out of the car and he's like, wait, wait, wait. He's like, take a photo of my ID. Like, I promise I'm not gonna hurt you or anything like that. Because he immediately knew I was like pretty sketched out. And so I'm like, fine, but just drive. And he's sitting here yelling at me the whole time. I can't believe I have to drive this far. My wife is going to kill me. And I'm like, just so annoyed, but just needing to go home desperately. So he's like, well, I have to get gas. So he's like, is like, can you find a gas station? So I'm on my Google Maps finding a gas station. He's like, oh, I need you to find one that's open because I need to pay with a credit card or I need to pay with cash. And it's like one in the morning. 
I'm like, oh my gosh, can this guy be any more difficult? So like after like miles of driving, trying to find a gas station open, we find one and he's like, I can't find my money. He's like, can you pay for it? So I'm immediately like, this guy is trying to do something. So I start sharing my location with people and I'm about to get out and then I'm like so over it and he could tell and randomly he finds his credit card, randomly. He was trying to get me to pay for it the whole time. And so the guy ends up being like kind of cool after a while, after I explained everything. I get home and I stayed with my mom's employee um, and the next morning my dad calls and he's like, we gotta go to the hospital. And I think my dad like had sobered up a little bit. So he finally like knew that I was in Tennessee like that night that I got there. So technically it was still that day, but it was early morning. So it was like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. My dad calls, he's like, we gotta go. So me and the employee go. And uh, I just don't want to say her name. Of course, she she means a lot to me. I just don't want to say her name. We go to the hospital, and I watched my mom die right in front of me in the ICU. And it was horrible, like, seeing my mom like that. And I just remember, like, they're like, you just tell us when, and we'll pull the plug. And it just made me so sad that they were just like, pumping her full of air and blood to stay alive and so my mom died um january 25th 2022 from alcoholic cirrhosis of the liver and kidney failure and i immediately knew that my dad was not going to be okay like as much as this hurt me i was so worried about my dad and i remember like maybe a, I stayed in Tennessee for another two weeks so um and we ended up doing like a memorial thing at the tattoo shop and it was beautiful and it was great it was great like it was awesome I'm glad that we got to have a really good memorial for my mom and tons of people were there and uh one day like a week later or two weeks later me and my dad were driving I was driving and he was in the passenger seat because my dad still had like the two DUIs. He had a restricted driver's license. I just lost it. And I was like, if you don't get help, me or you are next and you know it. And I was like, I'm already worried as hell about you, but now I'm kind of worried about me too. Not that I was going to hurt myself, but I just... Having to be in that, like, survival mode for five years, it makes you think differently. So I was like, Dad, me and you are on the chopping block next. And if you don't get help, like, I'm going to lose my mind. And he ended up getting, like, so scared that he was begging me to pull over because he had never seen me so upset. And I was, like, just, I wasn't screaming, but I was like, no, seriously, me and you are next. Sure enough, and my dad like had dreadlocks. My dad had like the most beautiful dreadlocks that my mom had done on him. And he's a white guy. Both my parents are white. Um, and like, I don't know if it was that, I think it was the night, the night before the memorial for my mom. So I don't remember the exact date. My dad just shaved all of his dreads off. And I knew then, I was like, he's not okay. The fact that he just buzz cut this hair that took years to look like that. And um, so I went, I went to, um, I went back home to California and I kept in contact with my dad every single day because I was so worried about him. And randomly I like, went to work and I had texted him about these potty pads for the dogs. And um, I was like, hey, what was the brand of those potty pads? And he didn't reply to me. And there's like a, it's three hours back in Tennessee, East Coast time. So I was like, well, I'm not gonna text him like when I got off work, cause it would have been like super duper late. And so I was just like expecting him to text me in the morning. And when I didn't see anything, 
I already knew. I already knew that he was not okay. So I, I blew up his phone and then I contacted someone that I trusted to deal with the situation that I knew he was going to walk into. And then some other people I had reached out and I said, if this person doesn't get there in time or within the time frame, I'm asking them to get there. Can you do it? So then a bunch of people started to try and help. And I was like, no, 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 because I, I know what you're going to walk into. Well, sadly, like the person I texted, he's so freaking old. He's in the hospital. Like, and he's like, yeah, I can come by later. So, but he, again, only person that I would have felt like could have dealt with this. So he goes to the house and he calls me. He's like, hey, like, where's the key? Blah, blah, blah. And I tell him. And he's like, okay, well, and he walks in. I'm on the phone with him still. And he's like, I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. I can hear the dogs barking. And he's like, well, I'm going to look around. I'm going to call you back. So I don't get a call for like 20 minutes. I already knew. I knew exactly what happened. My sister calls me. She's like, yeah, they found dad. He hung himself. And I just fell on the ground. I guess um, the guy who I called, he called my sister to tell me just because he was not sure how I was going to react. Uh, so, they, yeah, my dad took his life. And um, it's really sad because I didn't realize, like, how easy it was for him. Like, we always had, like, camping equipment in our basement. So he just looked left turned right and did what he needed to do and oh, I just it's horrible uh, I went back home immediately like a couple days later like I like god my poor job like I text them I'm like yeah I gotta go back home again because my other parent died and I literally got to see my dad on a metal cart in a body bag as the last time I got to see my dad in a body bag and I'm grateful that I was even able to see him because I know a lot of people that take their lives depending on the way they do it they can't see them luckily my dad didn't do a, any well okay he didn't do a lot of physical harm he was I was able to view his body and I kid you not we're at this funeral home and all of a sudden people open up the doors as we're viewing my dad and my sister's like, what the hell? So, and like, me, my sister wasn't really like, my sister really wasn't around through it all. Like I said, we were as close as we could be. But, um, so she just marches up there and she's like, why the hell are you opening the doors? Closes them. And then within like five minutes, they open again. And it's one of the workers of the funeral home saying, you have 10 more minutes. Like, are you kidding me? I couldn't even imagine, like, I I can't imagine, like, how low you would have to be to s tell a family you have 10 more minutes to say goodbye to, you know, the final moments of being able to view your loved one. So, I mean, it was a joke, and it was so sad. And um, my dad, the toxicology report, my they found 46 milliliters of fentanyl found in the blood, which is, like, 46 thousand milligrams and like he only had like 10 milliliters found in the blood when he totaled his car so it really made me realize because there was no note nothing I mean there was this was not premeditated my dad probably walked downstairs saw what he needed to hurt himself with and was like here we go and it's just so sad because there's just absolutely no thought to it. And um, it was weird because the, the day that I didn't get a reply from him, um, they actually think that he passed the day that he was found. So when I was texting him, they think he was still alive, but he was just so out of it. And when you're on fentanyl, like my dad would like call me and not even know and like butt dial me and leave me like 20 minute long voicemails of just bah, 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 damn, like door slam, you know, all kinds of shit. So 
Uh, yeah, my parents passed away three weeks apart. And then a month later, I had to put my dog down, my childhood dog that I like promised I was going to give her the best life I could. And like, that's a whole nother thing. Like even the dogs, man, like, you know, but my mom and dad's dog were there when my dad ended his life. Now I have my dad's dog after I rehomed him and found out he wasn't being taken care of. So it's just sad. Like even this dog has a whole story, you know, and he's never going to be able to talk to me, but oh my gosh, it's just, it's horrible. And now I feel like I came out here to California with this huge plan of I'm going to go to college. I'm going to make my parents so proud and I'm going to be so successful. And then I just had this feeling in the back being like, it's not everything it seems. And then when all that happened, I realized, you know what? I have got to like chill and not rush my life. I'm seeing everyone my age rushing and going to college and getting their first apartment. I'm here like I have to start all the way over. Um, How has all this changed you? Um, it's only been a year. So right? much. I think it's really just obviously opened my eyes to addiction and things like that uh but it's it's made me like at least like from from my point of view realize like you don't really need to be in a rush like because it makes me feel guilty sometimes that i'm not in school right now um or that i'm not doing something else but i'm like dude like when you have something this big happen to you, it totally changes your perspective. And I'm I'm happy with living paycheck to paycheck. I'm happy going to work every single day. I know a lot of people would be miserable, but the fact that I don't have to worry about me being able to sleep at night, making sure I have food, making sure my parents aren't gonna hurt themselves, like that really changes everything. When you're constantly in like a mode of having to survive and now, I'm like, I have the whole day to decide what I get to do. I'm not going to go to school and do all this fancy shit. I'm just not. And even like I was going to go to esthetician school, like beauty school, um, three days before my mom passed. I did the tour, paid a good bit of my tuition. And I was like, OK, you know, I dropped out of a really nice school, but I'm finally going to get my life together. And then boom, my mom passes. Signed up for the next month. Boom, my dad passes. I'm done trying that. You know, I really need to just enjoy being out here, especially coming all the way from Tennessee to California. It's way better out here as far as just like the day to day. So I've just learned that it's easy to compare yourself to other people's paths, but when you have been down a narrow path with tons of shit in the way, it's okay to take it slow. And I've also realized one of the really big things I realized is that other people can ruin your life. And I always say, had my mom never met the men she did in her life, she would probably be one of the most successful women out there. Definitely one of the like Kardashian vibe because she was just like such a hard worker, so independent. She moved out here at 18, just randomly packed up her stuff and came out here for a guy who ended up throwing her through a glass window and destroyed all the nerves in her hands, stalked her, tried to murder her. And then she was writing notes with my dad and moved back for him. And I'm like, just seeing the time span of her life and all she did, you know, like building a business, having two homes. Um, she also went to vet tech school on top of being a model, a full-time body piercer, like being a mom, having three dogs, like nothing was stopping her other than her addiction and the people around her. And I've just realized like it makes me never want like a boyfriend or like a husband because I'm like, you have no idea like what someone else can do to you. And it's really sad because it seemed like my parents were like the perfect rock and roll couple. They went to all their tattoo conventions and I mean, they were hanging out with, like, so many rock stars. Like, there's photos of my mom with, like, Zach Wilde and, like, 
those people would stay at our houses. Like, I even, like, they would, like, be like, hey, can I use your bathroom? You know what I mean? I knew those people. And just, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like, if if you have issues and you put your issues with another person, it doesn't work. And it just, it's scary. People are vulnerable. And I think people can feed on other people without meaning to. I don't, I don't. You know, I know for a fact my dad never meant to cause my mom any harm. And I know for a fact my mom never meant to cause my dad any harm. But neither of them are alive today because, in my opinion, of them being married, they had too much tied together and they didn't know how to separate it, and including their addictions. All right. October, thank you so much for sharing your story. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me and letting me be here today. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.